This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geeks, show number 213, recorded on May 7th, 2015. Our home gadget geeks will cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the Average Guy.tv studios and maybe a broken Average Guy.tv studios tonight as we struggle a little bit with a soundboard that got a little water last night. Uh, totally my fault. Uh, we made it through one podcast. We'll see if it makes it through today. But, uh, of course, we broadcast live uh, here from Bellevue, Nebraska, and post a show with world-class show notes each week out at the Average Guy. TV. If you have questions, comments, or contributions, of course you can send those in to me. Send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. You can track me down on Twitter at Jay Collison. Or now call in those questions, 402. You should probably stop the car before you do this, right? Before you write this down. 402 478 8450. We'll play those questions right here on the show. You can give me feedback that way, too. That's a great way to do it. Neil, I always appreciate Neil. It pretty much gives me a weekly call now and uh, lets me know what he appreciates. So I appreciate that as well. Call those in, and the Average Guy TV is powered by Maple Grove Partners Web Hosting. You can get secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from people you know. That's Christian and his dad Gary are running that. So some great web hosting available for you. For more information, visit Maple Grove Partners, and they got room for a couple more customers as well. So if you want to jump in there, fairly reasonable priced, you can get monthly hosting for as cheap as ten bucks. So give that a try. MapleGrovePartners.com. Of course, we want to thank Roger over at WLMN Radio for uh, broadcasting us or streaming us live right now, coming out in Grafton, West Virginia. So that's kind of fun to be make it full circle and go terrestrial radio as well. And, of course, Home Gadget Geeks is a part of the Geeks Network. You can find the link to this show plus many other great podcasts out at the Geeks Network, thegeeksnetwork.com. All right, well, we've got an interesting podcast for you tonight. We're going to be all uh, Amazon Echo, but before we do that, I mentioned the Geeks Network, and uh, let's introduce the guy who I think, Dave, the first time you've been on Home Gadget Geeks, welcome, and uh, you're the man behind the Geeks Network. Have I not been on a? Um, I don't not not I don't think an actual home gadget. I've been on a an average guy geek show, right? Maybe maybe way back in the home tech era. It's been a while, but I it agree. has been a while. Yeah, welcome back. You know, you're a busy guy. You've got young ones that keep you busy all the time and so yeah. I try not to you're already doing a couple podcasts a week so I try to leave you alone. Well thanks. I, I'm glad to be on. I appreciate that. No, good good to have you. And then over there the regular co host or over there, which either way, <laughs> uh, coming in from just across town, Mike Weger. Mike, welcome back. Thank you. You know, there is nothing better for a kid my age than being done with finals, turn in my last one at four PM. I'm done. I'm just ready to podcast, ready for a summer full of uh festivities so yeah no glad to be back yeah no and of course you're in law school and uh so your finals are pretty serious <laughs> finals i still don't know how you podcast and are in law school that would crush the any mortal man but you're like yeah it's just cool it's fun it's a good yeah. time it keeps me sane that's what it does so <laughs> <laughs> see that's insane i don't that that whole thing right there is insane nobody else does what you do and what, meanwhile, you're in a break studying, and you're on Periscope today and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, do what you got to do. So. All right. Uh, school school classes went well. By the they way, were, we're banking on you being the lawyer for the, the Geeks Network. So you've got to I think we're in good standing. School. I think we're good. Well, I'll tell you here in about two weeks. But, yeah, no, I think we're good. So, yeah. Awesome. As long as you feel good about it, that's all that uh, that's all that really matters. Well, well, let's not go off that. But, yeah, no, I no, no it went great. Let's all go. right. Sounds good. We'll go with that. Well, we uh, we want to dig in a little bit on the Amazon Echo. Dave has famously said over the last couple podcasts, uh, in the very beginning of the podcast, if you're looking for a three-minute review on this thing, you've come to the wrong place because we're going to spend a whole bunch of time tonight kind of digging in on the Amazon Echo. We've both had it now for a couple weeks and uh, have tried it out. I sat on my kitchen floor for an hour one night with the kids, and we just threw all kinds of things at it to see uh, what it would do. It has been, of course, if you haven't uh, if you haven't seen this yet, and I think most of you probably have, but head out to Amazon, search Echo. It's a long cylinder device. You actually see it. I'll, I'll point it. We've got it all. Uh, we've got it all wired up for tonight. We'll, we'll throw that on the video. This might be one you might want to watch the video on. So head out to the YouTube channel for us, or go to the post, theaverageguy.tv slash hgg uh, one. Uh, what, what number is this? Two one three, and uh, that will get you to the post. But 
we're showing that right now. Tonight we've got it mic'd up to a blue Yeti, so I threw the, the blue Yeti on it so we could get some good sound. And, uh, and so we'll be asking her some questions a little bit later. But really round cylinder, a couple speakers, some really good microphones, and it's really a, per a personal a digital assistant. That's kind of what I've been calling it. Dave, is that an accurate, uh, is that what you call it after working it, with it for a while? It's no, in my household, it's more like the children's plaything. It's oh. the children's weather announcer or, or why do snowflakes look different kind of, uh, you know, it's definitely not an assistant. It's more like a, a little friend. Oh, <laughs> see, so at the Collison house, we, we are really using the, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but we're really using those shopping list timer features, alarms, those kinds of things associated with it. Sarah has really, I think, she's up listening upstairs uh, tonight as well. She's really kind of embraced it. And uh, just the other morning she was making some tea, and she goes, well, I, we, we're going to call her Lexi because if I say her name, she'll start, you know, beeping on there. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll call her Lexi during the show if we don't want to do, don't want to talk to her. But um, she said, you know, Lexi, set a timer for two minutes. Boom, t timer set. Two minutes, wah, wah, you know, the thing goes off. She. It is a nice little uh, subtle tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk, Mike. From your, you don't have one of these yet. Dave and I got ours on almost the exact same day. You don't have one yet. Any thoughts about picking one of these up? No, I definitely thought about it. It was one of those things that came across my email um, back in. I think it was January. Was that when everyone got the invites? Definitely thought about it. Didn't pull the trigger, but now that you guys are playing with it, it's definitely making me envious. But I have a lot of questions, so so yeah, I'm excited for tonight. Okay, we'll jump in there when we when you've got a question for us, and let me just roll through the unboxing experience. And and you know, Amazon, it, 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 uh, the the box is Apple esque in nature. I mean, it's a really nice. They did a really nice job of putting these box together and and um, it, it fits tightly and comes in a nice blue you know container and the, 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 the it sits right in there it's packaged very very well when you get it it feels nice coming out of the box easy setup couple batteries uh, you put a couple batteries in the not actually in the unit but because the unit plugs in but a couple batteries in the remote does come with the remote that we have stuck on the fridge right by a little magnetic remote you just put it right by her and uh, I don't know if we've used the remote that much for what we're doing. Dave, are you guys playing music at all through it at this point? Oh, that's – I say it's not a digital assistant, but, I mean, I use timers like crazy. If that makes it an assistant, then, yeah. man, it, that's what it is. But music is really what we've been doing through it, and I, I can't get enough of it, honestly. Yeah. So it's really helpful from that. But the setup process for it, plug it in. It's going to spin orange for, uh, for I don't know, maybe 20, 30 seconds. There's going to be some Wi-Fi setup. You're going to want to download. There's an app that's available for both iPhone and Android that you're going to want to get in, log into, and connect with the same account that you used to purchase it from Amazon. And the app itself, um, it, it's a pretty good little app associated with it. So my not-so-digital assistant just brought this down to me. So if you want to see the remote, a handy little – she stepped down the stairs so that I could show this. Handy little remote, uh, really best for invoking it. You can hit the, you can hit the uh, microphone button and, uh, and, and invoke it that way. Or um, skip you know, or play the music. So this is kind of nice if you don't want to talk to it. But all the voice commands work as well, so we'll talk about that when we – Play music here in a minute. Great. Well, uh, real quick, Dave, I think you're a lot louder. I think you're turned up pretty high. If you can turn your volume down. Oh, Dave. If you, yeah. I thought it was just me. I asked the chat room, though, and they said you're a lot louder as well. So. Oh. Okay. That's real quick. And not louder for me. Yeah. It's like it's way louder on my end. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. we'll have him back up just a little bit. No big deal. Just thought it would save you some editing in the end. Uh, so. I don't care. <laughs> I just you, know, you run it through a level later in it. Yeah. Hey, I'll just. Uh, I'll just stand back. Oh, I'm that's a lot done. better, actually. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. We're fine. So, um, uh, so the app. Let's talk. Well, let's let's first of all, as we as we do this thing, there are some interesting uh, voice things that you can do with this, and I kind of don't know where to dig in and start. So let's start with the funny stuff. The, some of the funny stuff that we found. Well, yeah, let's start with the funny stuff because that's the most interesting things you can do. We found early on there were some things, and so. Really, I'm going to click over on her real quick so you guys can see her. So if you're watching the video, you should be able to see her now. 
And so we found some interesting th interesting things. So let's just start with a singer voice command like weather because that's easy. Alexa, what's the weather for tomorrow? Tomorrow in Bellevue, there will be thunderstorms with a high of 72 and a low of 57. And so like Dave, you were talking about, it's great for the weather. You mentioned your kids use it to know how to dress to make, you know, to make their way out. I check it every morning when I'm making sandwiches for the kids, mm -hmm. um, you know, check the weather. Uh, it's one of the things I think as we well, remind me to talk about when we talk about the future, I think there's some cool things it can do with the weather when it comes to weather alerts coming up. Cause I think there's some things where it can alert us, you know, going forward. But, um, uh, one of the, one of the funny things, of course, we started trying to trip it up to figure out what it could do. And of course it knows all the Holy grail stuff. So you can say, Alexa, what is your quest? To seek the Holy grail which is pretty cool if you're a Monty Python fan and you know how that goes. You can also say, Alexa, what's the meaning of life? A traditional answer is 42. So that comes, of course, from, from um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's out there. So kind of nerdy. You can ask, Alexa, tell me a joke. Two antennas got married. The wedding was boring, but the reception was excellent. <laughs> So, yeah. so actually, some oh, of them are pretty funny. Dave, do your kids do your kids ask it jokes all the time? No, because I I try not to open that up. If I ask her one joke, then it's it's over. That's all she's gonna do is just tell jokes. They would just stand there. I don't even think they would even eat or go to school. They would just stand there and talk to it. Oh, that's funny. Um, that we actually, uh, I think some of the jokes are pretty funny and they've, I'm not sure I've heard a few of them over again. And I think she's getting those from Bing. I think that's where the jokes are coming from. Um, they do a, there's a joke query it can send in and it'll just send back another, there's like a database of jokes that it pulls. Okay. Them from. So that's kind of interesting. You can ask some things like Alexa, what's the distance to the moon? The moon's distance is 239,000 miles, 384,000 kilometers. So some handy information along those lines. This was my favorite. Alexa, what's the temperature of the sun? Different parts of the sun have different temperatures. The surface is around 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, 6,000 degrees Celsius, while the core is between 23 and 29 million degrees Fahrenheit, 13 to 16 million degrees Celsius. Now, what's interesting is all this is happening in the app at the same time. So I'm watching the app right now. Actually, Sarah could be logged into the app. My daughter has logged into the app as well. And that query is coming up. So you have some opportunities to say, did she get it right or didn't she? Dave, I'm assuming they're learning through this process. Don't you think they're, they're getting some learning? I, I would yeah. think so. I don't remember if I – I don't remember signing off anything that they could uh... – you know, take and learn from how intrusive they were going to be, but uh, I I just assume that they're they're checking for those every time she says I don't know the answer or I did not hear what you said or something. You think that they would be capturing some of that in order to uh, to improve the service? Yeah, in the, in the app you get an option to say did it understand did she understand you correctly and you can say yes or no. Yes, and I try to go in there and and try to help as much as possible, you know, and, and, and do that. Yeah. I'm sure they're getting some telemetry, you know, back there's then if you say yes, there's a send more detailed feedback. So you could even send like, I was really looking for this. That might actually be really, really helpful as they're trying to train mm -hmm. this thing um, to be better. So you get, and it's kind of built like the cards. When you think about Google plus the, the card system that Google plus uses or Google now, it's kind of built that way. You, you, you get this, Every query is a card. So like when I asked what was the distance to the moon, in the app it actually brought a picture up of the moon for me, and then it gave me the response in the app. So I could go back and see what that query was. It, was, it would have been funny. Sarah was on the road for a week or so, and we were asking, that's when we were asking it the questions, and she could have pulled up the app to see all the funny questions we were asking. <laughs> that's to, right. Trying to get it um, uh, there. It'll even give you the, the text of the joke that you asked. Um, so some, that's what, you know, you can kind of come back to the app for that as well. Some of the things, uh, also on the app that are interesting and Dave, this is where really Mike too, this is really where we use it a lot is in the area of the shopping list. This has been super, 
super handy for us. So if you want to add an item to the shopping list, I think this will work. Um, Alexa, add Gatorade to my shopping list. I put Gatorade on your shopping list. She doesn't say it very well, but uh, it, that is Gatorade. She calls it Gatorade, which we think is very, very funny uh, nice. from that standpoint. I needed a pair of headphones earlier today because I lost mine. So you can say, Alexa, add a pair of headphones to my shopping list. I've put a pair of headphones on your shopping list. So then you can say, Alexa, read the shopping list back to me. Now, oh, see, the, the query failed. Alexa, read the shopping list to me. Huh. Now that should be working. Alexa, what is on my shopping list? You have 19 items on your shopping list. Here are the five most recent. A pair of headphones. Guiderade. Crest mouthwash. Paroxyl. Jameson. Oh, Paroxyl and Jameson. Would you like to hear the next five items? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish Sarah is probably oh. looking out up there like, he's so not like, going to read the whole. The next thing. item is condoms, ribbed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The, um, uh, the fun thing about that with the shopping list uh, functionality is, of course, because Sarah and I share that account, she can add things to the Echo and I could go pick them up a little bit later. Um, if that's what we need to do. You can make all the edits or add them to the shopping list right from the phone as well, which is cool. So you don't have to necessarily add it only from the Echo. One of the things I think that's important uh, there before I got distracted with, with alcohol and peroxyl was the fact that there's, she asks a question back when you're, when you're, when you're saying that. She says, D would you like to read me for me to read five more? And that, I think, that's one of the few places on the Echo it does that where you don't have to invoke the name again. And I'd like to see more of that come on the Echo where you do something, she asks you a question back, and you continue without necessarily, necessarily having to say her name again. It, it does that um, during music. I will, uh, I'll ask her to play a playlist, and I'll always forget, you know, because you can ask her, you can say, you know, keyword, play me my 80s playlist and she'll do that and then sometimes I, I forget and I'll say you know keyword play me a playlist you know because sometimes when you're talking to her you kind of freeze up and you'll say oh play me a playlist and she'll say okay what what playlist would you like me to play and then I can say you know 80s you know I have I have 80s and 90s and You've got that play those playlists yeah. built in your pool, you know, whatever party, easy listening, all kinds of stuff built in that I'd, I've already built, and I can tell her to play that. And if I forget to say one, she'll ask me, "Which dude? Which one do you want me to play?" You, you know. Oh so yes, Sarah wanted me to have her read the whole list. So, um, Alexa, read the entire shopping list. What should I add? No, Alexa, read the entire shopping list. Entire added to your shopping list. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Alexa, read the shopping list to me. There you go. What can I add for you? Uh, see, it's a little. It's this. This where it gets a little tricky. On it. Um, but does she make this mistake at home when you're talking it? to her, or is this is this I a technology with the shopping list? Yeah, I think it's a. I think it's because we're having more. She's having more trouble hearing me. I'm coming out of the speaker. Podcasting. Yeah. yeah. We have a surface. So the surface is what is, I've got surface on a mount that's running the camera here and I'm coming out of the speakers. So it could be. Yeah. Cause remember when we had problems, yeah. we tried to hook up an Ubi and we hooked up a pair of headphones and they didn't have the proper frequency response and it threw off the, the voice recognition. Yeah. Yeah. She gets it right. 99% uh, of the time when you're when we're talking to her this way, but let me try it again. Alexa, what's on my shopping list? You have 21 items on your shopping list. Here are the five most recent. Little tricky. Entire. A pair of headphones. Guiderade. Crest mouthwash. Would you like to hear the next five items? Yes, this is where a few more come. I, I didn't, it didn't, uh, when I said yes, I needed to stop talking. So it's interesting. There's still some, I, there's still some, as we throw a lot at this, 
I'm, I'm trying to talk to it in a normal, kind of in a normal voice, like you'd ask normal questions. So when we play the music, I might say, um, Alexa, play Phil Collins on my playlist. Phil Collins and more from Prime Music. Alexa, stop. So not Phil Collins, but that and was... And now we get pulled from YouTube. <laughs> oh, I, to I totally forgot. Hopefully it was short enough. It was that, short. Uh, it's like, I think it's like four seconds is what it listens for. So I think we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so the playlist functionality, Dave, you mentioned that you're using that all the time. Do you? How many playlists have you built on Amazon? Oh, I, I couldn't even tell you. I mean, that many. You know, this is prior to me... This is uh, prior to me getting the Echo is I use the Amazon uh, Cloud Player all the time, storing music and playing it back. Yeah, now Drashna says, doesn't the remote have a microphone on it? If I push the microphone on here, yes. can I? I haven't tried that yet. That's so. for like noisy room type. Ah, so you but can yeah, you probably should be doing that during this whole podcast. Well, I think you have better the results. Room, though. So I wonder how far this this um, this place here. Let me. Um, I'll turn try off it. the mic and we'll try it. Let's just we'll we'll try it. How does NASA organize a party? They plan it. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's, that's funny. That's um, so that actually worked. I, yeah. Uh, all the way down here. Okay. Very cool. I did not see. There you go. I did not know that you could you could do that. Very good. Um, we mentioned uh, we mentioned timers. So uh, Alexa set a timer for uh, Alexa set a timer for thirty seconds. Thirty seconds starting now. That's something we use a lot of, and, mm -hmm. uh, and that works out well. And then <clears throat> go ahead, Dave. Oh no, I, I wasn't trying to interrupt you. I was like, clearing my throat without um, hitting the mute button. But there's a cool thing that I learned just today. I was uh, I was doing something cooking wise, and I had her set a timer, and I was like, surely this these are done by now, right? So I just out of the blue, I said, Alexa, how much time is left on the timer? Your timer is currently being delivered. Alexa, time uh, timer off. So. You know, when you run longer timers, you know, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, you can ask her how much time is left on that, and she'll respond. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I, I, we, we set one for 15 minutes, and then I was, I was wondering how much is left, and you just yeah. ask her. Yeah, you just she'll ask tell, her. She'll yeah. tell you the time left on there. So, so pretty cool. Dave, are you on TuneIn at all? For is the podcast or it's like a, a home server show or Surface Geeks on TuneIn? I am not, and. Ever since I've gotten the, the Alexa, I was going to talk with you actually to see you know what we got to do because I, I think that would be kind of cool, right? Yeah. So what's what's funny is I Mike and I tried this in the pre-show. We could not get her to recognize the name Home Gadget Geeks. It just is too it's too complicated. But she will recognize Cyber Frontiers. So we can say, Alexa, play Cyber Frontiers on TuneIn. You'd like to play the program called Cyber Frontiers, right? Yes. Cyber Frontiers. Getting the latest episode. Here it is from TuneIn. This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Cyber Frontiers. Alexa, off. Off. recorded on April 27th. So that's a cool, I mean, that's the latest episode of Cyber Frontiers that's on TuneIn. Dave, all you have to do is go to TuneIn and submit your podcasts. I will do it. Super easy to do. But I, I find that cool right I mean, absolutely yeah yeah that's a that's a fun way to have your your podcast kind of kind of kind of come up uh, Pandora the same way Sarah has some stuff on Pandora I don't know what happens if I say uh, Alexa play Pandora getting the last Pandora station you listen to Ben Rector radio oh very nice we're gonna hear a little Ben Rector Alexa off <laughs> So Pandora works from that standpoint, and so if you're a big Pandora listener, it's it's nice to play the. I imagine, can you, Dave? Do you know? Can I get can I get to my lists? I haven't used it in this this function yet. Can you get to your list on Pandora? Do you know? I I don't use Pandora at all, honestly. I don't. I have no idea. So maybe maybe Sarah can type. Um, 
maybe Sarah can type in the chat room because I haven't tried that. I, I don't either, and I haven't tried that function. I've loved the Prime playlists. That's worked good enough for me. So I've it just, does. I've been playing. Yeah, those. I've I found that I don't need to venture out. And if I find you know I'm missing something, then yeah, maybe I would like to uh, venture out. So, Dave, any other features that you found? Those are kind of the major ones that are on there. Uh, there's a to-do list as well. So just like the shopping list, you can set a to-do list if you want to do that, and that shows up in your Amazon app. Any other features on there that you're using? We use the weather a lot. Um, my boys like to ask her weather questions all over the country, in any place that they can think of that they'll, they'll ask her the weather they were trying to find, you know, somewhere that was hotter than 90 degrees the other day, and they just couldn't find it. They're like, you know, find somewhere that's hot, and they couldn't find anything. And uh, of course, now my app, the uh, the log file is just just complete weather, just one after another after another. You know, Phoenix, Gila <laughs> Bend, and then San Diego, and then it was just crazy. Yeah, um, yeah. What what else? Very simple. Uh, music. Uh, I'm starting to use the shopping list, although shopping lists and to-do lists have taken a different little turn with uh, if this then that, and I know that we'll talk about that in a little while. Yeah. So I've kind of been saving those for for that purpose, and that's hard to understand, but it, it'll be more clear when we talk yeah. if this then that. We'll talk about it here in just a second. Sarah says in chat, she says, tell it to play Pandora movie soundtrack. So let's try that. Alexa, play Pandora movie soundtracks radio. Getting your movie soundtracks radio station from Pandora. Pandora, stop. Or Pandora. Alexa, stop. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's how you do it on, on Pandora. So pretty easy. And again, one of the things I've been trying not to do is talk to it, you know, because you see this in the commercial, not talk to it loud or not talk to it like it's a computer, you know, kind of have a normal I'd like. And I've been trying to say things like I'd like you to, and you know, or could you please to kind of make right. it feel more normal, you know. <laughs> You know, the big thing that we've had to learn, Jim, is you know that we've had an Ubi. So Ubi is like the $300. Uh, it was like one of the first voice automation uh, assistants to come out. And you would always have to say Ubi's name and then wait for Ubi to beep back at you. So my kids would get confused. They would say, you know, keyword, and they would just sit there. And they're like, we don't, you don't have to wait. Just tell it just tell her what what you want or ask her a question they always kept waiting for the beep right. and I would get confused and they would confuse the poor amazon device and it would you know it was it was a mess yeah it and it's it's still that point where you if you walk over it in the middle of something it's not listening and you know this is where i think this stuff needs to get a little bit better and even a little more conversational, although I do like it. I mean, I like it more than Siri from a conversation standpoint or more than even a Cortana from that standpoint. It just works real well. Michael Ray had asked early, is, so is it always on and always listening? And, yes, it's always listening for its name. At this point, you can set that to Alexa or Echo. We've set it to Alexa. I assume you guys have too, or do you call it Echo? Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't do anything – in settings, we just st I just started calling. I th I think the uh, A L E X A has more of a a, a personal feel. I don't want to feel like I'm talking to a machine. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's weird, but I I want to make it a little more personal. It, it kind of fits in the family a little better if we uh, call her by a name. Yeah, it'd be neat if we could make up a name, but I understand that's you know that's that might be a little more difficult for Amazon to do. Well, and I bet it's coming. You know, the kids said as we were we were testing with the kids, they really want Jarvis. That's really what they want, right? My my boys would love nothing more for a male British accent who is Jarvis. And uh, and so, you know, Alexa's cute, but they want they want that. They <laughs> want that from Iron Man. And so um, it, it will be, I think that will probably be something that's coming. Uh, it's so fast in its response. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I am always surprised. One of the things I was a little disappointed, like it can't find movie listings. So like I would really like to say, 
Lexi, uh, list the most recent movie listings over at Twin Creek Theaters. Those are the ones closest to us. And she wow, would start reading a, off what the movies yeah. are, right? With Tom. No, it would just take it would just take Amazon getting hooked in to some service where they you know, she could recognize locations where you're at. There's a lot of there's a lot of little things that she could probably do. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked earlier, I think there's some opportunities with like the weather to become a weather alert station. So when there are thunderstorms in your area mm -hmm. when there's, to turn on that feature and I imagine that's got to be coming pretty soon to start getting weather alerts too so she'll beep and say there's you know severe thunderstorms the National Service the National Weather Service is reporting thunderstorms and severe thunderstorms whatever in your area I can't imagine that would be too far away either yeah uh, you're probably gonna have to put in some do not disturb hours you know and Maybe. You, you alert me when there's a warning yeah, or not. Well, you're in tornado country, like we are, not quite like as much as you, uh -huh. but we, we're in, the, I wouldn't mind it waking me up if there was a tornado reported on the ground in the county yeah. that I'm in, right? So maybe some rules to say only if it's a tornado as opposed to just severe thunderstorm. Only if I'm going to die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and, and like today in Omaha, we had an Amber Alert that went out and my phone lit up. Stuff like that, Amber Alerts would be good to have to alert all houses, you know, if that have an Amazon Echo, that'd be something nice to have as well. Yeah, Tony Rayner says in chat, he says you wish Google would can make an Echo equivalent with using the Google Now, you know, functionality. Yeah. That That is, you know, take the the strong um, work that's being done on Google now and then marry that to the capabilities of what's going on in the echo. I think you got some pretty good stuff. I, I, maybe the yeah. two of them are. Well, you never know. I mean, you never know with Amazon. I, I love Google now when I'm carrying an Android device, I always flip over to Google now and see, because I have some preset things that I like to read about. Like I'll have surface pro in there or my favorite team. And that's the other thing that I use uh, keyword about is um, you can ask her, you know, when the Cubs play next, when the Texas Rangers play next, or what was, you know, who won the game last night. She knows sports, and that's kind of what makes me think that she could do the movie phone that you, that you would like to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, Go ahead absolutely. and ask her something about yeah. a pro team. Alexa, when do the San Francisco Giants play next? The Giants will play tonight at 9.15 p.m. at home against the Marlins. See, at home, you know, that's important. Yeah. Not just they play the Marlins tonight. Right. Alexa, what was the score for the Giants game yesterday? Yesterday, the Giants lost to the Padres, 9-1. to They will play tonight at 9.15 p.m. at home against the Marlins. Yeah, I hadn't used that feature yet. Oh, I love sports. Yeah, the sports is great. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's pretty cool. I wonder if she knows uh, if she knows the Creighton Blue Jays. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, she knows and she knows the major markets. Okay. Now, it does say um, there is a little quote unquote and more. Now, I've never tested her. Like, who won the last NASCAR race? I don't know if she would know that, or who won the Boston Marathon last yeah. year. I don't know if she could do stuff like that. Uh, let's try. I'll it. ask her. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, uh, Alexa, when do the Creighton Blue Jays play next? Uh, you have to talk a little bit louder for. Her. Alexa, when do the Creighton Blue Jays play next? Hmm, I'm not sure what you meant by that question. So she may not recognize the college. Creighton, let's try. Yeah. Let's try. The other watch. thing is that word is that's not a. That's a difficult word, too. Yeah. Creighton. Yes. Yeah, so maybe say Huskers. Let, yeah, let me try it. We'll try Husker baseball. Alexa, when's the next Husker baseball game? Sorry, I can't find the answer to the question so I heard. College, maybe, in that. Because she got yeah. Giant pretty well. But, um, and I think then, it's just so, the major teams. Yeah. Alexa, when is the next Colts game? Schedule information for the next Colts game is not yet available. Oh. So the, so the schedule hey. hasn't come out yet. Yeah. Or has it? No, it hasn't. No. Ask her if the Patriots really did de-inflate those footballs. <laughs> Alexa, who won the Super Bowl last year? Seattle Seahawks won the Super Bowl in 2014. 
Uh, so last year, yeah, was yeah. So That's I need to confusing. say this year. <laughs> Maybe she's not a Patriots fan. I didn't say who should have won this. Amazon season. is yeah. in Washington. <laughs> no, she's probably like Patriots. Who? I don't understand this I don't Patriots. Even know who they are? We don't Alexa, either, Alexa. Alexa, who won the Super Bowl this year? The New England Patriots won Super Bowl 49 with a score of 28 to 24 over the Seattle Seahawks. She didn't. She failed to say with a terrible throw in the last second. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and who made that call? Oh, exactly. Well, let's talk about, Dave, you mentioned it earlier, let's talk a little bit about if this, then that, because I think this is the exciting part. We've been waiting for something like this to come, and of course, the the Amazon just just uh, mentioned or just released the other day that, it, that they were adding recipes to if this, then that, and it seems like they're growing pretty fast. So uh, just to, so if you haven't tried ifttt.com, if you haven't tried that yet, it's kind of web automation. And there is now a channel for the Amazon. They just call it Amazon Alexa on uh, as a channel on it. And you have to enable it when you go into the service to enable it. But there's lots of integrations now when we think about adding. I'm just looking at here. I can add iOS reminders. So I can go through here. And anytime I add a reminder, it can add it to the iOS uh, reminder on my phone if it wants to do that. It's got some Nest integration now. which is kind of, That wasn't there a couple days ago. So somebody must have got that up and running in there. You can go to Gmail, you can do um, to do, you can create, Dave, I know, ooh, Dave, I know, that's me. Sorry about that. Um, Dave, I know you're an Evernote guy and Evernote is working. Have you done any of these yet? These integrations with, with uh, if this, then that? I've done a couple. And the first thing that I really like honed in on, I zeroed in that there were some smart things integration. Because this was brought up in all of the news releases and uh, every, anything that you see. And it, it's pretty big news if you say, okay, Echo can now run smart things. Well, it really doesn't do it very well. I, I, I wouldn't get too excited about it. I mean, this is like the first, first iteration of it. And it uses – the weird thing is, is it uses – your to-do list or your shopping list in order to make this happen. So it, it has to use some logic somewhere. I don't know if they've gotten all their API calls completed properly yet. So if you add something to your to-do list, you can have it turn on a lamp. And if you add something to your shopping list, you can have it turn off that lamp. Okay, that's okay to a certain extent, except it's really slow. Yeah. We're talking, in my situation, it was like five minutes. Really? That and long? some folks were having even longer response times. I thought it was broken. And I had it, I got it all done. And then I was just, I was standing there just going, dang, this, this doesn't work. I must be doing something wrong. And then click. I'm like, oh my God, the lamp just turned on. Yeah, and it's kind of a hack, right? I mean, it's not it's not really intended <laughs> to, to use your shopping list or use your to-do list for those kinds of things. I would imagine they're going to come with some new functionality here pretty soon where that's those run a little faster or they, they don't run through those kinds of lists. Yeah, no, they absolutely have to. There's no way that they can live with this functionality right now. Um and I, I assume that they will because they are talking uh, with Nest. They are talking, is it uh, Belkin Wi-Fi? And you can ask her directly uh, about home automation. I don't remember the exact, um, the exact command, but you can have her scan your network, and she'll look around and try to find some of those Wemo uh, devices. And if she finds them, she'll set them up for you. I just don't have them. What's that command? Do you remember? I remember seeing that in the setup. And it's like I think you can even ask her, just ask her to turn a light on and right. she'll start, she'll, she'll kick it off. Bulbs. You have to have those Phillips bulbs. Yeah, right? just, just ask her real quick and see if she'll start the uh, process. Alexa, turn my lights on. Sorry, I couldn't find a device or group named lights. Yeah, so I think she's got to discover. Let me ask her this. Alexa, what's on my network? 
Mm. Yeah. Mm. So the, and I remember there's a command in there that you do that gets her to scan the network. And uh, if you have the right equipment, it, right out of the box, I think it supports those Philip smart light bulbs. And uh, they'll show up as a device, and then you can turn them on and off. And I think that might even be available in the app. Let's look here real quick. Um, there is music services, voice purchasing, flash briefing, traffic, um, household profile, connected home. Yeah, so in the app, there's a connected home and devices section, and you can add devices through the app. That might be the that might be the best or easiest way to do it. Um, and you can go in there and add devices. It's going to go into a discovery mode. It'll say it'll take up to 20 seconds. If you have a Philips Hue bridge, and I didn't read the rest of them, it will discover those and allow you to turn the lights on and off. But, Dave, for some of these other things, like smart things, it's going to need to have a little more power. Discovery than... is complete. I couldn't find any connected home devices. If your Philips bulbs were not discovered, please press the button on the bridge and rerun discovery. There you go. So there's the discovery process. Yeah, so she did it. Yeah. There's – um. that part will come. I imagine it will come. And, you know, with Wemo and Philips Hue, I mean, those guys are – man, that's awesome. And you can group them so you could – um, you know, if folks want to turn a room on, you could turn a room on and off like that. But I don't have – I don't use a whole lot of uh, smart things for lighting control. It's more, you know, it's like garage doors, it's flood sensors and things like that. So there, there's a certain amount of uh, logic I would love to have with Alexa, and it's just not there yet. Um, that's where Alexa's, sorry, no, keywords, yeah, they're, they're, keyword they're sister uh, product, the Ubi, uh, works very well when uh, not only voice command, but you can also have it, you know, like announce if your phone came in to uh, the geofence of, of smart things, it could say, you know, Jim is Jim is home. Or, uh, you know, have it announce different things logic-wise with your smart things. It, it's, it's really neat. They, they do a very good job on that side of the house. They're just not as good on the music and, and the voice recognition and all of that kind of things. Yeah, I imagine it's just going to get better, right, from this standpoint. It seems like they're working on it. This, They're definitely not abandoning. You know, it's been out there now for four or five months, Yeah. and they continue to add things to it. So I think we're going to see some upgrades. She'll she'll automatically upgrade when she's ready, and uh, and you'll get the most recent. It'll, it'll be interesting to see if this hardware configuration changes based on new equipment. So for 99 bucks. You know, I'm hoping I get a couple years out of it before we have to kind of replace it with the upgraded version. But for right now, I mean, we're pretty happy with it just as it is. Dave, was there anything else in the if this, then that stuff that you saw or when you think about future stuff that you're you're looking for? Anything well, you, mentioned, you mentioned Evernote, and there's a lot of uh, OneNote integration in there as well. And I had a little bit of luck with that, and I, I hope that, that other folks are having luck with that as well. When you add things to your shopping list or your to-do list or something like that, you can have it throw something in, in Evernote and throw it in, in a OneNote as well, and that, that seems to be working pretty good. Uh, it'll do iOS, um, I, I can't remember, like reminders or, or pop-ups or whatever you call those things in the, in the iPhone, uh, notifications maybe. And yeah, it'll do that. that reminder if they're if they're heavily involved in using that reminder or the to do list on your iPhone, it'll automatically add those there as well. So that's one thing. I don't want to check the Amazon Echo app to get my shopping list. Now, we use it there because we don't have a combined shopping list, so we've been dropping it there. But I think it'll also move it out to OneNote. It'll move it out to Evernote. I mean, any of those any of those services that'll take those kinds of things easily. I think it'll move pretty simply too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, you're right. I don't want to. I don't want to dig in that app just to find a shopping list. If I can, uh, it'd be kind of cool if I could pin or uh, you know, put an icon of my shopping list that's in Evernote or OneNote right on my home screen, and it just always gets updates from 
yeah. keyword. Yeah. Yep. One of the things I'm kind of hoping for here in the future, well, let's let's focus a little bit on what we'd like to see coming up or some wish list items. One of the things, you mentioned it earlier, presence. So I'd like it to recognize, do a better job of recognizing either when I'm close by uh, or who I am uh, from a profile standpoint. So when I speak, it recognizes me and, and could even give me my own tailored lists. So I might have lists, I might have, Sarah might have her lists, we might have lists together. And so I could specify, um, you know, hey, put on my to-do list or put on, you know, this list here, multiple lists, so to speak. Um, because I think that's kind of key is it knows who, once it knows who I am, then there's lots of different things I can, that I can do. And I think about if this, then that, and smart things. So I could have automated, you know, I'm getting ready to leave, and I, I could say, Lexi, I'm leaving in five minutes, run my pre-morning program, and it opens the garage door. We talked about this last night. It opens the garage door, starts my car, you know, and gets that warmed up and, uh, and locks the door or unlocks the doors for me. I make my way into the car as I'm leaving, shuts the garage door, locks the house. Wow, you don't want much, do you? <laughs> But think about how I mean. Think about how cool, how it, cool it would be. I know. Uh, <clears throat> right now, yeah. I mean, let's get. I would love to have that first wish list and that. Okay, she knows I'm Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She knows I'm Sarah because right now you can only set it to one weather or not weather report, but traffic report. Right. So, you know, where's what's the traffic like to work, and she'll tell you. And so it'd be neat if you asked it. She would give you your route, and if Sarah asked it, keyword would give Sarah's route. You know, that that would be handy. I hadn't thought about it that way. Yeah, yeah. Just separate those, kind yeah. of separate them out. Mike. Yeah. Okay. Well, all my questions actually tonight revolved around. We're kind of at a good point to interject. This is, does she do a good job of bringing you back to Amazon services? So obviously Amazon is not going to make money off the hardware. So all of these questions are fun and good and they're, and they're beneficial to us. But on, an, on a business side, do, does she do a good job of bringing you back to e at least her music or shopping on Amazon or other things like that? I guess if you guys are using it, are you finding yourself, oh, okay, I guess if I were to get rid of Prime, I would be kind of down and out. You know, I haven't bought a single thing with it. <laughs> but you can. That, that's yeah. what I was wondering, though. You can, can do you voice purchases. Okay. Yeah, you can set her up. Just like on Amazon in the apps, you can enable one-click purchasing. You can also enable, I don't one voice purchasing, you know, purchase by voice. So, I, yeah, that, that kind of freaks me out because I want to see that price in front of me, and I want to see right. if it's a shipping item. I want to know. I want to make sure. First of all, it's a prime item, so I I really haven't shopped through her, Jim. Well, see, yeah. and that's what I was wondering is you know because that that would scare me as well. I wouldn't. I don't think I would ever shop through a device where I can't see the price, see the item, see the description, what exactly I'm getting. So I guess that's exactly my point is: Are they going to be making money through her? Well, wouldn't you say though? You know, hey, Lexi, how much is an ATR twenty one hundred? You know, how much is an Audio Technica ATR twenty one hundred right now? And you would think she'd give you a price back, right? Is that what we'd expect? Man, let's, let's try, try it. Yeah. yeah. Let's try it. Here we go. Alexa, how much is an Audio Technica 2100? Hmm. I can't find the answer oh, to the I question. Say ATR. I didn't say, let me try it again. Alexa, how much is an Audio Technica ATR 2100 right now? Hmm. I can't find the answer to the question. Yeah, see, this has been hard for me to find, even help it find products. Maybe somebody in the chat, Tony in chat, might know the right. I have not been able to get it to find anything in the Amazon store to even buy. You, well, see, Can and there's no... Ask her, like, what's the last thing I purchased or anything? Does she know that? Alexa. Alexa. Hold on. we got to make sure she can hear me. What's the last thing I purchased? Mm -hmm. Okay. You gotta get that. We we are having a little microphone problem there. Alexa, what is the last thing I purchased? Sorry, I didn't understand the question I heard. 
See, and that's and that's not a necessarily a bad thing on the consumer side. So for us, like you guys have mentioned for the entire show, like all the great things we can use her for, but on a business model from Amazon, is this actually driving more traffic, more business to their Amazon Prime, or at least to a buying things off of Amazon? Yeah. So that is kind of the where my whole questions revolve because I always think about okay, they're selling this thing for a hundred dollars. Is it going to be worth it for them? And I, I, for right now, at least, I don't think it is. But on a consumer side, yes, it's fantastic. It does a lot of great things for us. All right. So Sarah has the answer. Uh, we say, Alexa, search Amazon for an Audio Technica ATR twenty one hundred. No, maybe not. We'll try it one more time here. Maybe I'll try the microphone here. One sec. Right, let's see if that. I've added 2100 to your shopping list. No. So, uh, Mike, I'll be honest, I've struggled to get her to find things on Amazon and to even buy them. So, I think there needs to be, if they're really going to make this work, I, I think they got to work on that or it's got to, because it's, right now it's not intuitive enough that you would think that would be its primary purpose and it would just find those things. Or maybe I need to be more generic, like, like um, Alexa, search Amazon for Cheerios. There you go. Cheerios added to your shopping list. Oh, see, see. <laughs> oh Alexa. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or was this intentional? Is this something where Amazon says, hey, we get them really used to using our shopping list. We get them very used to asking us questions, getting them into our sphere without feeling like we're pressuring them to use Amazon services. And then over time, we build in the, hey, this is all on your shopping list. By the way, when you log into Amazon, it's also in your cart. So when you want to go there... You know, are they kind of prepping us easily and easing us into the whole idea of it? I don't know. I'm just thinking of any type of idea from Amazon to go this way with the Echo. Yeah, I, I thought, too, it would be a device that would be just, in the, you know, no pun intended, but it would be prime for purchases, right? It would just be really, really good for that. Right. And I, I struggle. I tried a couple times to get it because I, too, I was like, you know, now I should be able to say like buy my shopping list at Amazon, or maybe what what on my shopping list is available on Amazon. Right. Um, and and um, so and even in the app, when I'm in the app, um, it's not really clear if I go to my shopping list and I choose well when I choose an item on the shopping list, maybe this is what they're counting on right now, or it says search Amazon for for we'll use uh, we'll use the Paroxel. Uh, search Amazon for Proxel, search Bing for Proxel, move the item to the to-do list, or delete the item. Those are the four options I've got. So if I click, we'll say search Amazon for it, it's going to take me to the app on um, Amazon. So maybe that's what they're anticipating, is that you'll go to your shopping list, click each individual item, buy it from there. Dave, in that scenario, you see the price more comfortable? Yeah, no, I would... I would, I would be more comfortable. I I, just, I wonder how how it works. The only thing I can find in their FAQs is purchasing digital music. Mm. So I wonder if you ask her to, you know, I don't know, ask her to purchase that song? Taylor Swift's, uh, you know, I don't know, some she can recognize. Right. Yeah. No, I'm actually, I'm afraid that she'll buy it. <laughs> okay, so I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it, Jim. Go so, ahead. Uh... <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Go get Ludacris. Uh, Ludacris. Ludacris. What? What's his name? Ludacris. Ludacris. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I. I. It's. But it's not. It's not really obvious. So I think there's some opportunities there. I mean, I would go to the phone app, hit the. You know, hit the to-do list. You get the price. Do I want to buy it? Boom. So. Right. I guess maybe that's kind of where I'm going to land on buying this stuff from Amazon right off the right off the list. I just ask her, Alexa, buy digital music or something. Okay. Alexa, buy digital music. Mm -hmm. I think we well, both it, asked her. She 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 woke up when I, I said her name. Try it one more time. Alexa, buy digital music. She's mm -hmm. tired. She is she tired. Is tired. Alexa, buy digital music. Purchase. Purchase. Purchase, you think? All right, hold on. We'll try it one more time. Alexa. Alexa. Oh, no, it doesn't, really doesn't like me. Alexa, 
Purchase digital music. Go ahead with your question. Purchase digital music. Sorry, I didn't understand the question I heard. Everybody's so going to think this thing is really stupid, but I mean, for its, I mean, it's got pretty strict guidelines on what yeah. it can do and cannot do, and for what it can do, it's it's really awesome. Right. No, I don't think I, I'm kind of glad we're going through some of these things because it's not the be all end all. And but I think even I mean I've done it now when I'm in person with it, the response I'm getting is a lot better. I mean, again, it's hearing me out of a speaker that's on a surface that's a you know a couple feet away mm -hmm. from it. Yeah. And, and so we got some limitations to it. So. Yeah. But, just, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, if you if you live, I'm sorry. I thought it was my turn. If you <laughs> live in Amazon Music, it is phenomenal. Yeah. If you don't, you're not going to get it. Okay. Yeah. Alexa. Uh, Oh, go ahead. Play Son of a Preacher Man. Son of a Preacher Man by Dusty Springfield from Prime Music. Alexa, stop. That is amazing to me. Yeah. I love that. That took her, what, a second, two seconds to find that and play it. And that's the exact song I wanted to hear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think this is a great... Like Amazon Music is a great place for Amazon to start because everyone likes music. If you're a Prime member, you have access to it and you can just search for it right away. But it, it's just interesting to me because Amazon has always had a play. When they came out with the Amazon Fire Phone, they had Firefly, right? Which was the app that you could just point your phone at anything and it would connect you to Amazon and you could buy the app. So I'm just, I was waiting for people to get these echoes in their hand and say, okay, this is the play from Amazon. This is how they're getting you into their service. But I like, I almost like how they don't because they're doing so many things well, weather, traffic, just like you said, music is a perfect introduction. So I think, I think they did this strategically. If not, then I don't, I don't know what, but I was, I was surprised to hear that there wasn't a big play like Firefly, some feature like Firefly for the Echo via voice, not obviously via a camera. So it was just something I was interested in. Yeah. Yeah. No, Dave, to your point, it does, a, it does a lot of things well, especially when the things we've highlighted, when we think about to-do list, shopping list, weather, alarms, timers, those kinds of things with this work flawlessly when we're, mm -hmm. you know, we found, we put it in the kitchen. Where did it end up? Uh, is it in the kitchen at your place? It too? is in my kitchen and it fills, it fills that room with very, I mean, it sounds great. It really does sound great. Yeah, no, we like it too. Sarah has always played music off her computer, and so she's kind of made the move over to just say, you know, Lexi, play this, and uh, and it's and then one of the cool things is uh, so you as she's playing it, you can say, Lexi, turn it down, and she'll turn it down one, you know, or you can say, turn it down to two, and she'll go all the way down to two if you're at six. It's got ten settings on it. One of the things I didn't know as well is the top of that's actually, it actually rotates, and that is the sound, that's the physical sound um, volume adjustment. Is on yeah, it's, a, it's an infinity knob, so it's yeah. just spinning and spinning. It's, it's a beautiful mechanism. It works very well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard speed. not to touch keyword. I mean, it's, it's just this stout heavy piece of gear it's i think it's very well made and there's an there's an amazon you need to search amazon x echo teardown the teardown is really cool and it intrigues me because the first part of the teardown jim i've already had mine somewhat semi apart uh to investigate but some of the uh amplifier output wires are on the very bottom of the mechanism and it's when I first heard about this thing, my first thing was I, I wonder if I can get this thing to play the music on my home system as well. So if I could, if I can find the outputs, then uh, I'm going to try to interface it into my home system, and then so I can play it on all the zones. So I can just voice ask keyword, and then bam, she's just outputting to all the zones. That would, yeah. that's, that'll be amazing. Yeah, I thought maybe it would come with an output, but it doesn't in its current, right? There isn't, there isn't an output on the bottom of it. No, there is not. Yeah. There's I was a, hoping it would, or maybe even Bluetooth. No, you can Bluetooth to your phone. Right. You can Bluetooth that way, but yeah. Uh, yeah. 
No, they they for now you're playing the speakers. That's all. All right. Sarah gave me a, a purchase command, so she said, "Let's see, Alexa, let's see if she can hear me. Buy Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus." Here's a sample of Wrecking Ball, Clean by Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Alexa, stop. Don't just say Alexa purchase. That's my jam. You think? Um, yeah. Let's let's try. It. Let's hold on one more time. We'll let her. Her light is on, so we'll give it a second to turn off. The light is. Oh, there we go. I would ask her to play per and then purchase then that. Ask, then ask her to. Yeah. Okay, Alexa. Play Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus. Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus from Prime Music. Purchase that. Purchase that. Now do it. She's not listening. So Sarah, yeah. Sarah Alexa. Keyword. We call, Alexa, we purchase that. Hearts in vain. We jump. Never asking why. <laughs> we kissed. I used them. All right. I used the remote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and we've got, again, we're coming out of speakers on that. But, um... Yeah, I'll have to figure that out. She uh, apparently Sarah's done it because she said you need to use the word buy. Okay. She says the help says to use the word buy. So. And and everybody listening on audio, you, you probably need to understand. You know, Jim is speaking through the network through Google Plus, and so there's delay. When you're in the kitchen with this thing, you don't have to look at it. You don't have to do. You just say her name, play, keyword. You just, you just all in one, bam, yeah. bam, bam. Keyword, play, son of a preacher, man. And she does yeah. it instantly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right on. We've had, we've had great luck with it. We like it. I am, you know, we've, anytime you're trying to do a demo, you know, of course we got this all wired up. Anytime you're trying to do a demo, it's always interesting to get it done. Hey, 99 bucks if you're a Prime member right now. I, I don't know why you wouldn't try it. It's, I think it's a good, it's a great opportunity to try one. I think this is the future of a lot of this stuff uh, that's available. We're using the heck out of it. Uh, Mike, any other questions from you before we kind of bring this in for landing? Well, you had talked me into it. I was going to do a Leo Laporte, and I was going to order it as we were on the show. But they actually bumped it up, by the way, to uh, $200 if you're not a Prime member, 150 oh. if you are a Prime, and you don't get it till November. No, sorry. You still have to wait for an invite. That's what it is. Oh, So wow. you can't order it right now, and it's 150 even if you are a Prime member. So they bumped it up. Wow. I would still do it. Yeah. If, yeah. if I walked into someone's house and, and listened to the quality of audio and her giving you news reports and weather reports and traffic reports, I would still plunk down my 150 and get in line. Yeah. And Jim, so that's what I did. I requested the invite. <laughs> do it. Do it. You and I, Jim and I got on. You know, early first week of January, and we got it. What mid April? Two weeks ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. Twentieth, twentieth of yeah. April, something like it that. It goes by fast. It goes by fast, and if you if you don't, you'll regret. You know, regret a month or two from now. You're like, ah, oh, I should have done that. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I, I we're enjoying the heck out of it. It's one of those kinds of things that. It's better in person, and uh, if you're if you're thinking about doing that, uh, I'd recommend. I, I I like it. I think it's only going to get better, and there's there's just uh, more opportunities for things coming up. The integrations are going to get better as we go, and we just love ours. So that's one of those things that's going to become a, a a member of the family, and uh, I think it just keeps getting better with with uh, with upgrades that are coming in. So. Dave, thanks for taking. I'm, I'm glad you could be on to talk about this. Thanks for taking some time out tonight. Yeah. I know you got a busy schedule, but thanks for coming over and uh, and being a part of it. Glad to help. Thanks yeah. for having me. You bet. I'll remind folks while you're here, we are talking about Home Server Show Surface Geeks Average Guy Meetup that is going on. We've been reminding you for the last couple of weeks that the official meetup topic or the official meetup link is out now if you head over to homeservershow.com or just go to the show notes here and I'll include that link in the show notes for the official thread that's over there. Dave, are we, we're not signing up through Eventbrite this year. How, how are we getting our tickets to meet up this year? Well, Eventbrite charged, you know, a couple of dollars per ticket right. and I didn't want for any one of us to have to pay that fee so I was going to set something up via PayPal where I can do it that way. And um, you know, I can set I can set a quantity amount, and people can buy 
and I'll get the I'll get I'll get a purchasing report so I'll know if you're on the list or not and then we can just do it that way. And okay. you have to you have to have a ticket. There will be no purchasing day of. We will we will cut it off like 2 weeks prior. Yeah, it's always fun. If you're thinking about doing it, we're in Indianapolis uh, for this, September 12th. You'll want to come in on the 11th. You'll want to leave on the afternoon of the 13th. That's kind of the way it works over the weekend. Mike Weger is coming with me, and so we're excited about having him. I'll have a, I'll have somebody to road trip with. This is yeah. going to be awesome. Backpack, home server, and all. I'm going to have the whole... Yeah, Dave, uh, Mike's going to build a backpack home server that's foot-powered. That, nice. Uh, that'll have uh, complete Wi-Fi and... As he walks around, it's spinning the hard drives. Gigabit, everything. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. You'll want to be out there. And uh, we'll, we'll we, like I said, I'll have the link for all the detailed information in there if you've been following. Uh, it, it, interestingly enough, I was on Periscope earlier today. Somebody piped in uh, from that who's out in California and was saying, oh, man, I love Home Server Show, and I'd love to be at the meetup. But it's just too far to come all the way from right. California. We allow that to be an excuse. But if you're anywhere within a 10-hour drive, you have to come to the meetup. So there's no excuse. Mike and I are going to make that trek. Omaha to Indianapolis is a good 10 hours. And you it is. Make it. Yeah, it's, it's a long drive. And it uh, is. you got to make it. So meetup's coming up. Lots of information. Head out to the show notes. And uh, we will we'll have the link there to get that done. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter yet, I just sent one out. And so if you're not on that list, head out to theaverageguy.tv, click on the newsletter link and get signed up. If you want to get access to the newsletter, you can easily do that through theaverageguy.tv slash newsletter if you want to do it. But it's a lot better if it just comes in your email because then you get it automatically and don't forget about it. Lots of information about what's going on around here. And so, of course, you'll want to follow. If you want to do that, you can. We've got, uh, I don't know, 70 or 80 people that have signed up for that. And if you want to be on that, you can do it as well. If you want to support the Average Guy Tech Scholarship Fund, do that uh, averageguy.tv slash Amazon or for John Zadler in Canada. If you're a Canadian, you can use the averageguy.tv slash Amazon CA and those benefit Zadler, and then he can buy some stuff and hack on it, and we'll hear back. i got to get John back on the show this summer, so working on that right now, and, uh, and and he always has some good things to report on, and so you can use the averageguy.tv slash Amazon CA for Canada. American, just use the use the, the other one, right? Get that right. They, they don't work for each other, so that doesn't work. We are live Saturday morning. In fact, this Saturday morning, Dave Jackson is out. I am in. Mike Howard is coming in with me on a Saturday morning. We are going to host Ask the Podcast uh, Podcast Coach, if I could say it. Maybe after a beer, it's tough to <laughs> it's tough to say some of those things after the beer is gone. Ask the Podcast Coach, Saturday mornings, 9.30 Central, 10.30 Eastern. It'll be fun. Mike Howard and I talking about all the things we've learned in the years of podcasting. It would be good to have Mike on there with me. Dave said he might join us. Dave Jackson, that is, said he might join us over there. And how did it work out, Dave, that I podcast with two Daves now on a regular basis? That's... I can always tell which one you're talking about. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I uh... need a podcast coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do too. It's good. Uh, some For some reason, they let me on that program, and we have a lot of fun on Saturday mornings taking call-ins. I still have some work to do to figure out that whole call-in system and get that set up. I haven't done that yet. And, Mike, speaking of that, I still have to figure out how we stream – to graft in, I have I got it so that you can take a night off too. Yeah, no, we got it all set up, so we're good. Yeah, sounds good. So, yeah. uh, is that Sarah? Yes. Yes, she's. Oh, wow! It's she's she's. Are you in heaven? I'm with Alexa, and I figured something out. Oh, okay. So you go into the Echo app, and I had to enable one-click purchasing. So. Mm. I'm going to attempt to buy a song from Alexa, and we'll see if it works now. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll wait. Alexa, buy Shut Up and Dance by Walk the Moon. Didn't work. Hmm. Yeah. I'll have to play with that. But yeah. it, it was off, and I enabled it, so okay. we'll have to try it out. All right. Sounds good. That That is the voice of my wife, Sarah, behind the scenes, not in heaven. But she is uh, she's in the room with Alexa, powered by the Surface Pro 3. That did a did a nice job. If you if you were watching on the video, the uh, Surface Pro 3 is in there. That's what's powering the camera uh, behind uh, Alexa out there. And 
And so uh, the, the, the Pro 3 did a nice job. No, it's no Surface 3, Dave, but it is it is a Surface Pro 3. Got so one of those around here. You got a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> I have issues. <laughs> you have Surface issues. I do. Yeah. We are live every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out here at TheAverageGuy.tv Live. Remind you, we got some great co- uh, podcasts, including... We're adding open mic night over there at the Geeks Network, so head over to thegeeksnetwork.com and catch those. If you need some more podcasts to listen to, and everybody needs more podcasts to listen to, we've got some great ones out there. Get those on your playlist. We'll be back next week. I think we got a full slate of stuff coming up, and so don't uh, don't go far. We'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody.